Hey, good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, December 8th. How are you all doing? I'm very excited about today's class, but in all honesty, I'm a little bit nervous because I haven't done handwork on camera like this in my lap. I mean, I know I know how to do it on my sewing machine. I got the whole camera operation uh, good to go. And so this is, we are on a maiden voyage. <laughs> so thank you for your kindness. Thank you for joining. I went to the forum and I have received some emails and we'll do that before we get started. Uh, basically, I'm going to show you today the outline stitch how to work with pearl cotton and also how to work with embroidery floss like the kind you get at um, Joann's or the dime store, those don't exist anymore, uh, how, to, how to use those threads and, um, and then how to take something as simple as the outline stitch and make it just wonderful. So morning Margo. Okay, Barbara Black. Okay, Barbara, I'm just again going to thank you so much for how you lead us along the way with our projects. Uh, you are, um, you have always been an ardent supporter of us and the fact that you've jumped on board and helped babysit us is just an amazing thing. So thank you so much. So this morning I got an email from Kathy who uh, wanted to know if, uh, well, she wanted to show me what happened to a quilt of hers. And basically, I think she said she lives in Florida or something, and the upstairs leaked to the downstairs. I'd be very worried about that. But look what happened to her quilt. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I think she said she spent a year to work on it. Okay, it happens. It happens. And red, it's all, I'm always leery of red. Always. I mean, I love it. It might be my favorite color, but I'm always leery of red fabric. And she wanted to know if RetroClean would work to get rid of it. I use RetroClean for um, my linens when I'm doing my Cindy Needham stuff. So let me tell you a couple stories. Ricky on the Super Seminars would talk about, I think it was a Baltimore album quilt. I, I forget. I forget. It was hung at a show. And it was so big, it had to go, you know, on the floor. So they put it on a sheet and somehow there was water damage in the building and the red just went whoosh. And I can't remember if it was a Baltimore album quilt, but it was like, it took that much time type thing. Okay, talk about sick to your stomach and, and how Kathy didn't just almost throw up is beyond me. Um, then also my friend Deb Stevens, who helps put on my retreats, God sent to you too, Deb, um, had a red and white Christmas quilt ruined. And I said, okay, just let me take it home. And I, I can't make it, well, I could make it worse, but I think I got the answer. What I would do, Kathy, is this. Uh, I would go by Centropol. We do sell it on the site. Probably your local quilt shop has it, but it is a liquid and it helps eat up the excess dye. Now, here is the, the tricky part in using Centropol. First of all, you want to read the instructions because it's going to have you do things that seem extremely counterintuitive, okay? It says, well, I'm going to tell you, you got to find a washing machine with an agitator. And as Paula Reed said once, as if you're not agitated enough at this point. And then you're going to, I think, I think it says hot water, it might say warm water, you can Barbara correct me. You put what it says to put in there. And I also throw in maybe half a dozen shout color catchers, just for good measure. And then what happens is it agitates in the machine and lo and behold, it comes out. So Kathy, when I looked at it, uh, I know the red quilt that Ricky was talking about. I know Deb's quilt that I saved way worse, way worse. So I, I'm confident you will be able to um, be able to get it out. Now, the other thing is, okay, so finding a washing machine with an agitator. 
I do believe Centropol has some high E, a uh, high efficiency energy ones, but I just, so, okay, so when I was in Africa with Ricky, sounds like I'm on a tangent, but it's all going somewhere, our washing machine broke, and I got hold of my parents, and I said, just get me a new washer and dryer, just get it for me, because I couldn't imagine coming home, I think there was even a super seminar before that, you know, being gone three weeks, ending in Africa, and not having a washing machine, and so my, I said, Dad, I just trust you, just go get it, and that and he got me a high efficiency washing machine. Well, that makes sense if you're doing clothes for a bunch of people and this and that. Well, it broke. And so I went down to Adam Appliance that's no longer with us and I said, I want a machine with an agitator, old school. And he said, is there anything else you want? And I said, yeah, I don't want lid lock. Um, you know, like, so, when you're bringing your clothes from your bedroom to the laundry room and you put it in and then you go back and find socks somewhere and then the lid has to get unlocked and, and all that. So he had one. And I think he even said too that those were, be, that lid lock is going to have to be something that they all have. So I don't know, but I've got one. I've got an old school washing machine without lid lock that has an agitator. And that's how I got out Deb's stuff. So you can try it in your high efficiency and see what happens if it works. And if it doesn't work, then um, find a friend that still has an agitator. And I would almost say send it to me, but I'm not going to open up that business. <laughs> I don't want to be responsible. Okay, so our current show is with Kumiko. And uh, her work is extraordinary. I want you to look at the bottom center, that's my fingertip, to show you what she does. Um, her work is just phenomenal. She's she's adorable, uh, she's Japanese, and she has a little wicked sense of humor. We like you, Kamika. Uh, so look at this one. Again, these are uber small quilts. Look at this, we put an iPhone on it for, um, for frame of reference of size. She did micro stippling like I have never seen in my life. And as I sat down to Cindy Needham's quilt on my Q20, um, I'm sitting there going, I gotta watch that show again. Even though I'm doing bubbles, there's something to be said for working minutely. It is not for chickens, I'll tell you that. So right now, you know, it is our renew time. And I was surprised that John did this. Um, if you renew before December 15th, you'll get both PDF books. It's Lilo's Love Your Creative Space and Anne Hazelwood Quilter of the Door. And in fact, I did an interview. I've done a lot with Lilo, but I also did an Anne Hazelwood interview that you might want to go and check out. PDF download. PDF what did I say? Oh, I thought I just said PDF downloads. PDF downloads. <laughs> By the way, yesterday, apparently Amazon blew up and we were having problems on our site. Um, and so did uh, Adele. They were like taking tickets for Adele in Vegas. So I'm um, sorry if it was slow on the site yesterday. Anyways, what am I doing here? Oh, also... If you renew before the end of the year, you get three BOMs. Normally, you only get the one, but um, let's start with the center, which is the current one with Wendy Williams. That will be gone, bye-bye, bye-bye at the end of the year. So if you are new to the game and you want this quilt, and Barbara did incredible lessons with it every month, and everybody's miraculously is coming together, you need to join and download all that stuff before the end of the year. We also licensed with Janet Stone, and I think we have her quilt, um, I'm gonna say through March, not 100%, but the thing you have to understand, people, is that these are the patterns you get, and we license them, and when they go bye-bye, they revert back to the designer. And then, of course, Irene, Irene Blank's pattern is this next year. Um, it is not the kits, it is not the quilt, it, it's the PDF patterns that debut 
uh, for like next year's once a month. I did a wonderful interview with Irene from Down Under uh, Monday after we hung up and we'll look at that at one point. So um, it's a heck of a deal for 49 bucks a year, 49 bucks. Okay, so uh, Joanne sent me this. I sent you all off to the library or wherever to get stitching books. And she found, this is, I think, in her stash. Um, I'm not sure. I, I told you guys to go to the library, and I didn't go to the library myself. So this is another one that Joanne has. There's just so many out there, um, you know, that... There you go. Just start collecting them. All right. Let's look at what you guys have going on. Carol. Okay, Carol is getting this uh, from Sue Spargo, these silks. What a beautiful spread, Carol. And then I'm assuming you'll get some beautiful, wonderful blending threads that have the whole range of light to dark. Somebody even wrote me, I meant to print it out, and said... Um, something about Sue Spargo that it should be illegal to be able to spend so much money on craft. And I just started laughing because guess what I'm asking for for Christmas from my kids? <laughs> Sue Spargo wools. <laughs> I sent them the link. I can only they can only afford like you know fat one hundreds or whatever. And I and I just said solved. This is what you guys can get me. I can't wait to see what they picked out for me. And I suggested that they work together so I don't get duplicate colors. <laughs> I loved it. But this stuff from Sue is also, um, is also silks. As you can see, I'm a devotee of hers. Okay. So Becky, Becky was a little scared to cut into the, the fabric because it's so beautiful. And I hear you. I like what you did, Becky, but now Becky is trying to figure out whether she wants to do ovals, and I want you all to vote on this. I'm going to give you a little beat on this. Ovals, these are, I think, Amanda Murphy's templates, machine quilting templates, or should she do round? And then she sent this picture with, she threw the thread on top of it. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, this is what I think. But I want to know what you guys think. I think this is very George Jetson-y looking. And I think you could get some really fun things going on. My concern is that your lines are so linear. Is it not safer to go... You know, I wonder if I can put them both up at the same time. That would be cool. Um, if it's not safer to go with circles... What do you guys think? Let's start voting here. Oh, they're all saying oval. Okay, there you go. Told you what a chicken I am. <laughs> but everyone's got an opinion here, and I love everything about it. Okay, Helen. Helen, a team leader in the forum. Look at this. She is going to do something completely different. And I'm going to be real curious to see what you, um, um, safe is boring, Hillary says, go with ovals. I'm going to be real curious with what you do. And the fact that you've thrown in prints is going to add an interesting dynamic. I can't wait to see. You don't, you do, your work does not disappoint me. Okay. Then Barbara said this was completely out of her comfort zone. I think she did too. Thank you for buying Quilter Select. <laughs> but look, you did it. It's fabulous. I'm, just think that this is great. And I believe you might, one of you said you zigzagged around the edges. I can't remember who. Not a bad idea. And then Irene went to her Dupiani's. This is exquisite. And um, she is going to do Brazilian um, stitchery. I, did, I have never heard of that. So, Irene, I can't wait to see what you do. I went and looked and got this under image um, images, and I'm wondering if this is what you're talking about. And then I have to say, no name. I don't know what your name is because your profile's not filled out. I, I put this up. I love how you inserted some linen. It's fabulous. You guys are so good. Seriously. Oh, it was Ellen that said she zigzagged around the edge. 
And she did not have problems with the fabric prep, okay? Uh, I got an email from one of you and you had problems with it. And I don't know if your iron went too hot or if you were not pressing like this because it is very lightweight. Okay, is there a, a magic trick to remove the fold lines from the silks? All the silks I bought have what appears to be permanent fold lines that ironing doesn't remove. Linda Mine has that too. I'm just going to ignore it. With all the stitching on it, just don't worry about it. And I hope I'm saying something true here. And then look at this, what Pam did with those wonderful little inserts of orange. So you guys do not disappoint me at all. Um, I will scroll, th scroll through the questions when we get to the end because I am, I, I have to concentrate on what I'm doing now. Alrighty? Like getting the camera back on me. Oh, I got to get rid of that. All right. First thing I'm going to talk about is threading your needle, okay? And no, wait, first I'm going to talk about marking. That's what I'm going to do. So let me get this over here. There we go. And I mentioned two different things to mark with, all right? One was the friction pin, and then one was my quilter select pin. And one of you wrote to me, and it's true, and said on Hermoda Solids, she put the friction on it, ironed it, and it left ghost markings. Yes, it can do that. But don't dismay because um, you'll be stitching on top of it. So for that, if you're going to use this friction pen, make sure you um, test it. And if that bothers you like crazy, then use something else. Now, the problem with this is that it goes away in... I'm going to say 24, 48 hours, okay? And I recalled, I had to think about this, when I did it before, I didn't mark all of the circles. I just did one circle at a time, starting with the larger circles. Oh, and this thing measures about 14 by 18. All right. Somebody else asked, do I like working, I'm going to go up here, do I like working with batting behind? You know, you can flip a coin on that. So I'm just going to go like this, and then I will start stitching, all right? If I decide I don't like the marking on this, remember, you can go and erase with this, all right? That will go away, trust me. So I'm now going to work on another piece because I want to show you some different cartwheels, and so there we go. Okay, I'm going to put my little practice piece here. And if you haven't done this before, make yourself a little practice piece. I do like this little lap dust, okay, that I'm working on. So here are, here's, all right. I'm having a quilt, a tangle bee going up here. Oh, forget it, let me, oh, there it went, okay. I threaded it, I threaded it before because I didn't know how hard it would be for me to do. In total, you want your uh, thread to be about 18 inches in total, all right? That's probably maybe 20 inches, all right? Then this is how I make a knot, and I'm going to show you a technique called knotless, but it can't really do it with this thread because you're gonna work with one ply only. So I thread my needle, I come down here. Some people do a quilter's knot, that's fine. I do this knot, I make an O, making sure the camera can see this. I make an O, and then I come up through the O, and then I have my little knot. I will do it again in a moment, all right? Then I'm going to cut it. If I am using like your DMC that's six ply, you're going to cut yourself a really long one. Like this is probably 33. What's half of 33? 33? Yeah, that's right, because you want it to be about 18 inches in the end. I, I realize that math does not add up, but you know, something long, all right? And then what you're going to do, this is how I split it. It's so flippin' scientific, you're going to be so impressed. 
I take off two, two of the things. Is that two right up there? Yeah, two strands, because there's six on it. All right. Then I put it in my mouth. This is a technique from my grandma. <laughs> Come on. And I just did it wrong. Rewind, take one strand off, one strand off. Rewind, not two, one. I'm gonna try just pulling it and hope it doesn't get knotted too. Yeah, there we go. One, one ply, one ply, I screwed up. All right, because in the end, when you're working with this DMC stuff, you want it to be this, the stuff on a skein, you want it to be too thick. Whereas with this stuff, it's, it's you want it to be th two plies. On this stuff, you want it to be one ply. I have to show you something. Um, when I was in Columbia, California State Park, Lindy had a wonderful quilt shop there. She had three boxes of this that she sold me. Jealousy doesn't look good on you people. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my sashiko needles. It's my go-to. And I'm going to thread it. Sometimes I just licked it with two plies. It's a little bit hard to thread. Boy, it's a big needle. There, it went right through. Okay. So what you've got going on now here is you've got one end that's raw and one end that's a loop, okay? I started with one ply, but now it's doubled. And then how you start it is this, rather than the knot that I showed you. I will go from the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter, yeah, maybe the bottom. Come up, no, maybe the top. I haven't worked with this in a while. I always use the pearl now. I'm going to come in. You see that? Okay. I wonder if I can get any closer. Let's get it in frame. I'm trying a different camera than I used on Monday. Yeah, there it is. Then I'm going to come up one thread away from that hole that I was in. Okay, one thread. Come up, and then I'm going to catch it. There it is. It's ready to go. Okay. So I actually I'll I'll, I'll use this. We're gonna do the outline stitch, and how you do it. I'm gonna use my pen. Is it's basically. That's what you're doing, if not even a little more up. You always want the thread marching in the same direction, always, okay? So how I do it is this. I hold the needle with my left hand. You will hold, if you're a left-hander, if you are a right-hander, you will hold it with your right hand. So I'm holding it with my left hand. With my right hand, I'm going to pull it over with my thumb. If you're a right-hander, you're going to pull it over with your left thumb. And what you're doing is you're making sure the thread is always on the same side so that you don't get this going on. Like that. It keeps it orderly. I do take a little itty bitty 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 stitch. And I go up almost to the first stitch. See how I'm holding it? This needle's kind of big for this. See, I'm going to pull it over. If you're a right-hander, you're going to hold the needle with your right hand and pull with your left thumb. If you have a hard time getting consistent stitches, do not fret. 
you can, I learned this from uh, Lee uh, that we taped with, her grandma would take, or her mom would take a little black felt tip pen and mark the tip of her fingertip, and then that would be her spacer. But I've done enough red work that, you know, it's fine. Oh, also, you got in your little kit those little pads that are really great, and I will put it on my thumb to push through if my thumb feels like it's starting to need it in, in lieu of a big fat thimble. I really only use thimbles for when I am when I am uh, hand quilting. Okay, and then somebody asked, is it hard to turn a corner like a triangle? Well, not really, but let me show you what can happen. Well, I want to go up a little bit more. By the way, an expert embroiderer said once that you want the stitches to look as good on the back as they do on the front. All right, that's how it's judged. You know what? I am not an expert, nor are you. I would say these stitches are, let me hold it up to my mat and tell you what they are. They're about an eighth, I would say. Okay, so now let's say I want to go this way. I'm going to turn it. And okay, I've, no, it's not happening here. Let me try it again. It's not working here, what I wanted to show you. If your stitches start to collapse when you go around a corner, let's take an itty bitty stitch because I'm going to go that way now. Just an itty bitty. Itty bitty, bitty, bitty. If they collapse when you change direction, by collapsing, I mean I go here and it's going to fall down. Just take a little stitch to hold it in space. People are saying that you're doing this also called the stem stitch. Okay, it's also called the stem stitch. Okay, and then I start in again. Okay, and off we go. Oh, I don't want that hole there. See, you can see I'm an expert at this. I got to go back up. Somebody said that they were, you know, their mom kind of taught them that they didn't know what they were doing. You can see here that nothing is perfect. I do not enter my hand stitch quilts for competition. <laughs> and truth be known, this Sasha Co needle is a little too big. What's up, John? So again, why do you end up using a hoop? Oh, I'm, you can use a hoop, okay? Um, and I like a small hoop. The reason... The, I use a hoop, when I do use a hoop, it's about this big, it's about four inches. When I'm getting into these circles here, um, I don't want to have to keep moving the hoop. Now what the hoop does is it keeps your, um, from pulling too tight, from doing that. So be aware to not pull tight. And I also believe that this stabilizer on the back of the silk uh, helps, okay? you from pulling it in. Can you use batting on the back? Of course you can. Okay, so see how I keep pulling it with my right thumb, stitching with my left. If you're a right-hander, stitch with your right, pull with your left. All right, now I'm. let's say I'm done. So let's talk about finishing it off. I'm going to go into the back, and then I'm going to show you a cool trick here. I'm going to go in the back, Oh, good, you can see it. And you can do a couple things. What I like to do is this. I like to go into the fabric just a little bit and the stitch just a little bit. And then I wrap a French knot around it. And we are going to get into French knots and pull it through. And then I've got a great little knot. Then what you want to do, or what I would suggest you do, is go up a couple stitches, just tuck it in, and then with your scissors, be very careful guys, don't go down, I mean be so careful, just slice it, all right? I love on this lap app that there's a place for your scissors right up here. By the way, this is from an old fabric line of mine, Kristen made me a cover. Never did well, and I think these are killer, by the way. All right, 
So now you've got, let me show you what you got going on here. You've got this little stitch going on. Um, in, in this book, the outline stitch, the one, this book here, hand embroidery, again, there's 10,000 million books out. You can then do some fun things with this stitch, just doing outline or stem stitch. Let's see, in this little book that you got in your kit, it is page 50, all right? Shows you how you have your little pictures. But then look at this. Yes, John? Are you coming up to just short of the Just, stitch? I'm coming up just short of it. Just completely short of it. Okay, let me take my blue here. Now I'm going to use um, my pearl cotton like this. Okay, so it's just one ply. So here is this just very simple Dumbo stitch. Not really Dumbo. It's red work. But the other thing you can do is then start weaving. Um, I'm going to go, let me see. I'm going to, where am I going to go? I'm going to go through here. And I'm going to go through here. And then I'm going to go through here. And then I'm going to go through here. I'll show you. I'll grab my neutral quilt. And you get kind of a, uh-oh, I did that one wrong. You get kind of a candy cane thing going on. Let me grab my neutral quilt because I feel like this is a lousy example. Not I feel, it is a lousy example. Uh, do, do, do. Where are you? Where are you? I know I've done it. Hmm. See, so if they're crummy stitches, you're not going to be able to find them anyways. Okay, so there's the outline stitch right there. I didn't do it. I could go back and do it. Um, oh, here we go. I knew I did it. So here I'm using um, my white thread and then I used my metallic gold. And then I went through, I wonder if I can even get closer. I mean, it's just beautiful. Just, it's so elegant and so simple. Uh, uh, okay, then I did it on the outside too. So here you have a real basic stitch that then you can go back and do really wonderful things with it, okay? So um, let's go here. Let's tie off this one too, just for fun. There are tons of YouTubes out there with stitching things and videos. If you have, what am I caught on? There we go. See, the demo I was going to do, I was going to do two different colors, and these are two different colors believe it or not, but then I got going with my um, embroidery floss. Turn the corner. Turn the corner. Turn my body, and so forth. Give a little tug. There, I'm doing better here. Yeah, it's beautiful. And you're just, you're just um, popping it up a little bit. So, so what I would suggest you do is this. I would suggest where my I would suggest you do one circle at a time. That's how I did it on here. And then when you draw a circle, let's go back to this, and you stitch it all up. This is really feeling very awkward to me, but I know I'll get used to it by the time we get done. I'm going to stitch this baby up. And then if you want, you could do a couple more here and there. Again, I would start with the big, and then we'll overlap with smaller ones. 
And then what we'll do is we will go start making smaller rings, concentric, that go inside and go inside. And I think what I'm going to do is next on Friday, I'm going to do the chain stitch, which is primarily what I did with a lot of my outlines, okay? Then we're going to do like the single stitch, and then you can do weaving things there. Uh, this is a gas, but we aren't there yet. Where This was just all long threads that then I went and I took little itty bitty tucks. None of this is hard, guys. I think the hardest one is going to be the French knot, and that's when for sure you're going to want to practice on something else. Yes? Oh, um, here, let me put it, let's see, how am I using the slap desk? What I'm doing, let's see, is I'm sitting in a normal size chair, all right? I could use a lap desk that doesn't have legs on it, but what this does is I can bring it up to the height that I want. So, you know, whatever's comfortable for me, it's got these gears here. Kristen likes it because her cat can sit on it while she's working. I don't think I'd like that. Okay, I can tilt it if I want. All right. This is a good Christmas present, by the way. Um, I can take this other one. I'm going to lift it up. You can just, all these different configurations going on. This feels really good. And it has a little bit of batting in it, so if at some point you, not batting, but some kind of undercover thing, if you have to stab, it gives you something to stab into. I hope that makes sense. I love having my little scissors here. So let me look at some questions. Let me get in here and look at some questions. I hope that this was good. Okay, uh, Peggy says she's used one of these. It's really helped with the rest of the arms so your shoulders don't get so stressed. Thank you. What am I going to do with these pieces when I'm finished the embroidery? I, I am probably, I'm going to probably quilt it and then somehow mount it or frame it. Not frame it. What, one of the things I like to do is I like to get um, a painter canvas, you know, the kinds that's stretched, and then paint it black and then mount it on it. Basically, you're making art. Now, Pauline who I'm going to her house tomorrow for a luncheon. She always puts on the best luncheons in the world. Uh, she, she says, I don't need anything else. I don't, she lives in very small quarters, but she loves to make exotic garments. So she's gonna do something for the top of a bodice. You can make a pillow. All right, uh, Rose, can you move the closed caption by dragging it? Words are in the way of the demo, okay? Okay, okay, Karen, um, if you get trouble going under the threads to wrap the second thread, um, you can use the eye of the needle. I'm going to tell you why I think I ran into troubles right now, is that I used this two-ply, this, this two-ply DMC, and then I tried to um, integrate the one-ply. I think that's what was going on there, okay? I probably should have just stuck with one-ply together, all right? or two-ply together, but you know what? Who cares, right? Yeah, let's see. Can you show how to use the lap desk? Not sure. Okay, a little confused. Um, I was ahead of my time. Nah. Oh, thank you, Amy. I got my nails done yesterday. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting that in the other embroidery books, it's called a stem stitch, but you know what? Here's the ding, oh, I'm running late. Here's the other thing, is that you go to Barbara Brackman's encyclopedia of quilt blocks and they have 10,000 different names, yes. Okay, okay, so on Friday, we're gonna do the chain stitch. And then um, Barbara, I did an interview with her and uh, you're gonna see her special exhibit at Houston and it's really fun because she is our fearless leader and um, so we're going to do that. Friday's going to be a busy day. So thanks for watching and I think we are good and I'm going to go stitch my circles and get out of my demo mode. Bye-bye.